In this my final rainwater collection video of this season, I'll drain and winterize the tanks. This year I installed two rainwater tanks on our property. The 1200 gallon tank collects rainwater from a workshop and shed roof. This tank back feeds our irrigation lines when our well gets low midsummer. The smaller 500 gallon tank was set up to collect rainwater from a pavilion in the garden. That system was designed to run off grid with a solar panel, controller, deep cycle battery and a 12 volt pump. I shot a complete series of videos on the installation of these tanks and I'm very happy with the results, both the tank setup and the videos. So the focus of this episode is to get these tanks ready for a winter freeze. This will be our first winter here with rainwater tanks, so here's what I did. To maximize the roof area for the 1200 gallon tank, I had connected the gutters with a PVC pipe, and that was held in place with wooden brackets and galvanized straps. The larger workshop sits a bit higher than the shed, so this worked well for collecting water during the summer. For the winter though, I'll remove these pipes and store them away. And then I'll reinstall the original aluminum downspouts on the workshop. Next, I'll start draining the 1200 gallon tank. I installed a 3 quarter inch hose fitting on the bulkhead valve so I can attach a garden hose. I'll let this run into the underground drain pipe that goes to the road. This tank was full, so I'll let this drain overnight. Beside the tank on the shed wall, I have an assembly of pipes and fittings. I'll open the gate valve to bypass the first flush diverter and tank inlet pipe. Now I'll remove the drain hose, pinhole washer, and filter from the bottom of the first flush chamber. All these parts will be cleaned before storing them away for the winter. I'll spin off the bottom of the chamber to remove the float ball and to clean any sediment that built up. I'll leave the bottom of the chamber open until I reassemble everything and start collecting water again in the spring. I'll repeat this on the other side of the shed. I have a pipe running along the north side of the shed that connects the gutter runoff from both downspout assemblies. Over in the garden, I'll open that gate valve as well, and also start draining this 500 gallon tank. I connected a few garden hoses together so I could drain this tank into the same underground line as the larger tank. In the garden and around the house, I have several drip irrigation systems set up with timers, filters, and pressure reducers. I'll need to remove, drain, and clean all these parts as well. I start by removing the timer and its screened washer. Then I'll spin off the short hose, Y filter, and pressure reducer as one. The fine screen in the Y filter picks up a lot of sediment, so I clean this around three times a season. This one has a nylon mesh, but I've started replacing them with stainless steel mesh. I find the nylon is not as durable or long lasting. Finally, I'll put a cap on the poly line that runs to the raised beds. And I'll repeat this for all the taps with timers. I also remove the batteries from the timers and start each season with a new set.
The next day, I'll drain the entire irrigation system. We have a shallow irrigation well with pump house at the lowest point of the property. I'll turn off the power supply to this three-quarter horsepower jet pump. Then connect a garden hose to a tap on the line that leads to the well. and then turn on the ball valves to the rest of the system so it can start draining. And I'll need to run back to the garden and open all the taps. Starting with the tap at the highest elevation. When that's drained, I'll turn off the ball valve on the garden supply side and drain the spin-down sediment filter. Then remove its housing. This filter needs the most attention as it picks up a lot of sediment from our old irrigation well. I'll put this back in the spring. I'll remove my priming plug and add some non-toxic RV antifreeze to the pump and pressure tank, remembering to close the drain tap on the line to the well. I'll drain some water from the pressure tank until it turns pink, as well as the tap to the well. And that's the pump house looked after. When the 1200 gallon tank is drained, I'll disconnect the pipe from the valve for the float and screen. I used pinch clamps when I plumbed this, but now I realized I should have used screw clamps, or even better, some type of quick disconnect. Okay, I'm gonna drain this. On the left, this line runs under the concrete curb on its way to the pump inlet in the back of the shed. The low point is where the pipe drops below the curb. I could blow this water out with an air hose, but I decided to just pour some antifreeze down the pipe. Then I'll flush this out in the spring. In the back of the shed, I'll open the ball valves and then drain the filter into a pail. I'll unscrew the union on the lower inlet side of the pump. Then spin off the filter housing. And next, disconnect the outlet pipe from the pump. In the winter, I want to replace the pipe from the pump to the pressure tank, as it still leaks a bit. I'll drain the rest of the water in the pump by removing a brass plug in the housing. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. Out in the garden, I'll start working on the line from the tank to the pump. This is a black poly line from the tank through the pump house wall and up to the sediment filter. Here, I also should have added a quick disconnect for ease of drainage. For now though, I decided to just cut this pipe. 
I did remove the pinch clamps, but the cold plastic was just too stiff to remove from the barbed fitting. I'll figure out a better way to do this in the spring. Then I can turn that down, turn that on, drain the rest of that. I can turn on the ball valves, let this drain, then remove the sediment housing and filter. I removed the inlet and outlet lines from this pump and wasn't sure what I'd do with it just yet. It was getting late so I decided to deal with that the next day, and I wasn't sure how to get the last bit of water out of the tanks, so I'd sleep on that too. There was some water still in the float hose line, so I lifted this using its tether to drain it completely. I remembered that I had a submersible utility pump in our crawl space, and I thought this would be perfect for getting the last few inches of water out of the tanks. I'll tie a rope to this pump and attach a garden hose to the outlet before lowering this into the tank. This only took about 20 minutes to get almost all the leftover water. The overflow siphon trap was full, so I'll add some antifreeze to that. And this tank is done! I'll drop the utility pump into the 500 gallon tank to drain it next. Now, the 12-volt pump could just be disconnected from the water lines and brought indoors for the winter, but I decided to leave it in place and run some antifreeze through it. I had an RV winterizing kit, and it had a spare barb fitting for a hose, so I used this, and it worked well. Drain some out of these lines and then leave them right inside.
I'll add a fitting to also make this easier to do in the future. As I said, it's my first winter with these rainwater tanks, so I'm learning as I go. So I think that's everything I have to do to protect the pumps, hoses, pipes, and tanks from freeze damage through the winter. Our winters here on Vancouver Island are usually mild, but you never know when we'll get a deep freeze or heavy wet snow. Thanks for watching, and leave me a comment with your thoughts or ideas. Let me know if I missed anything here. We can all benefit from the shared knowledge. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.